This video is sponsored by Xanalus Zone Zero. Today, I'm diving into a new project. The team over at Xanalus Zone Zero have set me a challenge. For those that don't know, Xanalus Zone Zero is an action-packed urban fantasy game with a rich world full of vibrant characters, each with their own unique stories and personalities. And they've asked me to take two of their iconic characters and reimagine them in my own style. A blend of their world, their personalities and my personal touch. This is going to be a creative challenge and I wanted to share with you my process as I bring these characters to life. Hopefully by the end of this video you will come away with some new tips and insights that you can use on your own creative journey. But for now let's go ahead and get into it because I don't have a lot of time to do this and we've got a lot of work to do. Today, I'll be making Ching Yi and Jane Doe. These two characters are full of style and should be great fun to reimagine. With plenty of reference images at the ready, I jump straight into sculpting. I'm starting with the head of the character, and this may take multiple attempts and iterations until I'm happy with the outcome. But my goal during these stages is to simply have fun and not to be too critical of my results. After multiple attempts and some not so appealing results, I'm happy with how this one looks and I now start playing around with the hair. I've said this many times before, but hair in 3D modeling can come in many variations and styles, but I generally lean towards a stylized plastic look as I like the aesthetic and it works pretty well for 3D printing. To do this, I'm just using basic low poly shapes to block out the general style and then once I'm happy, I'll start adding some thickness and smoothing these over. After a short while, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking and now I can safely move on to begin blocking out the rest of the model. There we have the complete block out, now I just up my poly count and smooth this over, ready for the next step. Once I've completed the character sculpt, I like to perform a quick retopology. This is where we take that high poly mesh and create a lower poly version that's optimized for rigging, texturing and rendering. This can be quite the meticulous process, but I find it easier to break this down into different sections, starting with a retopology of the head and then working my way through different limbs, ensuring to pay close attention to my edge flow where each limb connects to the torso. There are a lot of retopology tools out there these days, but for a nice clean job, I find it's best to do it yourself. Although if anyone is working on a new AI powered retopology tool, that would be amazing. With the retopology complete, we can now move on to the clothing. I found duplicating and repurposing parts of the base mesh is an efficient way to start. This method is great for most things, but there are some objects that I find easier just to model or sculpt from scratch, such as pieces of armor, equipment and the shoes.
With the model looking good, it's time to bring this to life with some textures. Today, I'm going to be using a combination of basic shaders and texture painting to achieve my desired results. Adding basic shaders is easy enough, but in order to start texture painting an object, I first need to UV unwrap it. UV unwrapping takes a 3D object and lays it out on a 2D plane. This is an essential step to make sure textures are applied correctly. Once this is done, I can use Blender's texture painting tools to begin painting directly onto the model. Phew, this process took a while, but after some further adjustment to lean a little more to that anime look, I'm pretty happy with how my version of Jingji has turned out. Now I've got one more character to do. I was running pretty short of time on this project, so in order to speed things up for the second character, I opted to use the already re-apologized base mesh from Jingji as a starting point. This will save me lots of time, and to make the adjustments I need, I simply add a multi-resolution modifier. This modifier will allow me to sculpt the character to my liking whilst maintaining the topology. Other than that, everything I did for Jane though was pretty much the same process as Jing Ji. So to save you listening to me rambling on for a while, let's play some music and cue a little modeling montage of the process. steps, I gave these characters a quick wig for posing in Blender and added some lights for some cinematic renders. A big thank you to Zenlessone Zero for letting me reimagine some of their iconic characters, but that's all from me today my friends. I hope you learned something new, have a beautiful day, and I'll see you in the next one.